Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Build a Steampunk City, episode 11. This week we are building the Grand Tinker's Palace. Throughout my time playing Minecraft, I've built castles, cities, but never a palace. So what I did in preparation is I went to good old Google Images and just looked up Renaissance palaces to go ahead and fuel my inspiration. After looking at Google Images for a while, I decided to go with an enclosed courtyard with a large central building in the backdrop. The pink will are the two side arms of the enclosed courtyard, while the green is going to be the front arm of the enclosed courtyard, and the yellow is going to be that main building backdrop I was talking about. The original concept that I was going to go with for the palace was just going to have that large yellow building right there, and then all the other space would be designated to a sort of park, but I decided no, the palace has to be grand, that's what we're going with. And now with the orange and blue wool, I'm sort of loosely outlining what the top floor of the palace is going to look like. Building up from the wool, I'm adding in some giant marble chunks, and then throughout the build we're going to slowly chip away and carve into it until we get our finished product. After looking at the build for a bit, I decided it's not tall enough and not grand enough, so I decided to add a couple more layers to the height of our palace. Now we're moving over to the side part of the palace, which are going to be those long hallways that enclose the courtyard. It's going to be two set of arches roughly ending near the middle, the top bit's a little bit longer. The top part is going to be windowed, while the bottom is just going to have the stone slab behind. The top arch window is not completely solid, I decided to add a little column in the center, and I decided to dent it even further and have stairs on the top and bottom and have stone slabs as that pillared column. I went ahead and then added some oak stairs along with some quartz stairs to help break up the two arch effects. Doing that gives it that sort of pseudo roof effect and then I went and copied the first chunk and pasted it all the way down the hallway. And then for the lighting of the build I decided to use glowstone. Originally it was every column, I decided it was too much so I went ahead and did every other column instead. This side section I'm just going to call the hallway because essentially that's all it is. It makes it a little more easier to reference. We're moving on to the top part of it now, adding in the same steep oak roof that we had throughout our steampunk city build. Once I got the roof to appropriate size and shape that I was happy with, uh, I decided to knock back the top lock and add a white quartz effect to it with the sort of crenellation going on. Heading over to the front, we're copying and pasting the same hallway effect onto this part of the palace. And now just installing the rest of the roof for the remainder of the hallway part of the palace. So I play D&D and I love to world build, so of course I gotta come up with a story for this palace and overall our city in general. So our steampunk city is a democracy, but it's not a normal democracy in the sense of America. It's a technocracy, a government ruled by the scientists and engineers, which is fitting for a steampunk city. The Grand Tinker's Palace, of course, is where the Grand Tinker lives, and the Grand Tinker isn't so much a person as it is a position. It's pretty much the equivalent to the President, which means the Grand Tinker's Palace is the equivalent to the White House. So that's just the little bit of story I decided to go with for our steampunk city so far. And with the general oak part of the roofs done, I decided it was a little bit too plain for me. So I came back in and added a dormer roof, two of them actually, one to the left, one to the right, and nothing in the center. When I had a design of the dormer roof that I was happy with, I copy and pasted it all over the hallway roof. Now we're heading over to the back side. I wanted to go ahead and repeat that hallway theme going around our palace, except I wanted to add a little bit of variation here. The first thing we're doing to achieve that variation is we're lowering the hallway a couple blocks down. The hallway is also going to be open to the air, so it's not going to be enclosed by glass or anything, but it's still going to have that same roof, except on a smaller scale. On the topic of smaller scale, I loosely copied the bottom arch effect that we had on the enclosed hallways over to the open hallways. A very small design feature that makes practical sense is adding these tiny little quartz pillars to you know, help support the roof and helps break up just the plain boring nothingness that would just be there without those pillars. And when I was happy with the effect that I achieved, I went and copied, flipped it, and pasted it over to the other half. I could easily just use that same hallway effect and completely wrap it around the back side of the palace, but the more detail, the more variation in the build, the better it looks. 
So at the center back part of the palace, I said I'm going to add a different bit of structure to help break up that, what would be one continuous hallway. You can also see I'm using that same pseudo roof effect that breaks up the bottom part of the hallway with the top part that was used on the other hallways. And then I went ahead and added in a large coarse block and then began working on the roof. One building tip if you're using world edit, one useful tip for building with world edit is build a bunch of squares added onto each other like this. These are two squares you're looking at right now. And make sure they're not hollow. Make sure it's solid in there so you can constantly just carve in until you get a design that you like. Moving back over to the side, we got to build the transition from the lower hallway up into the enclosed taller hallway. So adding in stairs, then we're going to put in a roof that's just going to extend over to the enclosed hallway. Out of all the mini projects we've done in Let's Build a Steampunk City, I think the palace just unseated the airship docks as my favorite part to build. So with the main foundation of the palace finished, we're moving on to the top part of the main structure. Before I start building, I gotta get a feel for what the top part of this main structure is gonna look like. So I want to outline a couple of stuff with wool. The center orange bit is going to be a large tower that emerges from the center of the main structure, while the four blue squares are gonna be smaller towers on the edges, and the yellow represents where four more dormer roofs are gonna go, are going to connect onto the tower. The best thing about this part of the palace was it was symmetric on all sides, so I only had to build one side and I could use world edit to copy and paste it to all the remaining three sides. After mapping out the top part of the palace, there's a lot of white space left open, and I had to decide what I was going to do with it. I went and opted just to add a normal slanted oak roof effect, and then the top flat part was just going to be filled in with oak as well. Now, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with these four side towers. Originally I decided, you know what, maybe I'll have it come out one block, have it overhang a bit, but in the end I did not like the design effect, so I just ended up scrapping it, and I went with the traditional smaller towers that we've used on the apartments and the airship docks. And once that was finished, I went ahead and repeated it over to the left side as well. Copying and pasting over the first dormer roof onto this side, along with the other corner bit of the tower. And the palace is really coming along, it's almost done, just have to add a little bit more detail and decorate the interior courtyard as well. And with the lower part of the roof finished, we just gotta finish up the main tower bit that protrudes out from the top of our palace. The center panel of this tower has a arched window while the corners have this fence and stone slab design. And I really did like this effect with the slabs with the fence on top and the white stairs on the bottom. I, I wish I discovered this theme a little bit earlier in our Steampunk City build. I probably would have used it on a lot of other structures. The roof of course is going to be that oak steep that we've used throughout the entire Steampunk build. On top of that we're also going to add some smaller dormer windows to it. And of course capping off those windows with the white quartz block effect. Coming back over to the side, we're finishing up the bottom part of the main palace building. Remember how I said I loved that effect with the slab with the fence on top and the quartz stairs on the bottom? Loved it so much I ended up repeating it on this part of the palace as well. And with this large flat wall split up horizontally, it was time to come back and split it up vertically with the pillar block and then just add in some small arched windows. Moving over to the last bit, the courtyard of our palace. We are faced with a large, and I mean large, flat quartz wall. So to help break it up, I put in this horizontal line using that same slab with the fence on top and then split it up vertically with some more pillar blocks. The top row, I went ahead and used the same small 
glass arch windows that we had on the back side part of the base of the main structure. Another thing I did to help diversify this flat wall was add some tiered platforms. These platforms are where our grand staircase is going to go that leads up to the main doors of our palace. While I was building this grand staircase into this white palace, I started to get some repressed memories from Anne Orlando in Dark Souls. The original plan was to add maybe a fountain or some sort of decoration, maybe a statue into this courtyard, but the staircase ended up being so massive I didn't end up having room for one. It took me a while before I got a design of the staircase that I was happy with, but when it was completed, it was time to address the front entrance to our palace. The theme I've repeated multiple times throughout my builds is the doorways into the structures usually have a small stair effect above it with some pillars on the side. Just very humble, but I decided to exaggerate that massively for the palace, so I added this massive roof with big chunky columns to the side to help support that roof. And then to both sides of this doorway, I'm adding a pair of these large diamond windows that are separated by a quartz pillar. So I purposely made the left and right panel a lot larger than the two inside panels. This allows us to create a different size window to add variation to the build. And now we're looking at the enclosed hallways from the courtyard perspective. What we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste the same theme that we used on the outside hallways, but on the inside instead. And with finishing the pasting of the interior of the courtyard, we can lift this tall hallway that leads into it. I end up taking a very unique styling approach to designing this hallway. If you notice, the bottom part of the hallway perfectly reflects the top part. It's a mirror image from bottom to top. With that, the build is done, and the Grand Tinker's Palace is finished. We got two more episodes left. Next week, we're going to be building the inn, and the final week is going to be the large skyscraper at the center of the tower. And look at the palace. I think it looks freaking fantastic. The back side with those multiple tiered hallways, moving over to the side, the top part of the palace, just everything. This was by far my favorite build in the steampunk city so far. So if you liked the video, please click that like button. Share it with a friend too. If you want to see more of Let's Build a Steampunk City, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. Joe Bowlby out.